Hello, I think you know me by now, but if you don't, I am RJ Kozain, and you are about to tune into one of the coolest episodes of PGHR Talk this year so far. It's with pghmuseums.org, but you already know that as well. It is with Bob Fryer, aka Dirty, who does all of this art that you see here, and hopefully we get some B-roll shots in the actual talk itself somewhere. Um, we go to some dark places, we go to hip-hop influences not wanting to go out that much there's like so much that we cover we always cover so much in these interviews or at least i try tell me if i'm doing a good job after this break i'm gonna sit him down the chair and we're gonna go over the entire room before i take it all home with me pgh museums is made possible through our affiliates such as the punxsutawney weather discovery center the punxsutawney weather discovery center is an interactive science center devoted to weather and weather folklore located in a century-old former post office in a town who's known for its weather-predicting groundhog. The Punxsutawney Weather Discovery Center lets you become a tornado, make a thunderstorm, or even be a TV weather forecaster. We met up with the center's executive director, Marlene Leelock, to see if she's ever been caught playing with the green screen. (laughs) Yes, don't tell my board, but uh, yes, we play with the green screen all the time. It's fun. It's... uh, If you've never been in front of one of them, uh, you can pretend that you're doing the weather. Uh, You can also take one of the green capes that we have and make your body disappear. So, you know, there's all kinds of fun things that you can do with it. Has she ever forged a weather forecast and predicted a catastrophe? I can't say that I've done that, but that gives me some food for thought. (laughs) You can create your own weather apocalypse forecast and learn everything the center has to offer at the Punxsutawney Weather Discovery Center. Discover more at weatherdiscovery.org. When did you start with art? Uh, that I, I've told this uh, many times. I, I started when I was a kid. I used to mm-hmm. love to try to draw a car, try to draw a bird, or my G.I. Joe guys, or, or my Star Wars guys. And I just loved it. I draw them how I saw them. And, and they look like crap. I mean, I was like, I was a kid. You're a kid. Yeah. yeah. But my neighbor was an art teacher. So I used to go to Jealous. her house. Yeah, oh, uh, it was. Great. I didn't have a neighbor as an art teacher. No, she she was really cool about it, and she taught me to look at everything as an object. Uh, every, every line connects and makes an object. It see it how you see it, and c- just connect the lines and make the shapes. Nice, and th- and that's kind of what I do now. So, and and from that, and and she still lives next door to my mom, and uh, uh, we're we're still very active with each other, and and I, I see her all the time, so. Yeah. I'm definitely jealous there. <laughs> uh, what kind? So we're in your studio. We're mm-hmm. surrounded by all of this stuff. It's obviously very loud, very in your face. Yeah, it, it is. Yes. And when when we built the studio, it had these beautiful white walls. It was clean. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, my father-in-law came over, which helped me build it. Mm-hmm. Like a week, two weeks later. And he was basically like, what the hell did you do? You had these beautiful walls. I was like, I wasn't keeping those. No. Why would you? Yeah. Like, Why would he? <laughs> that, that's that's my thing. Like, like I, I get an idea. I'll, I'll jot it down on the wall. Like, why waste paper? I can just paint over my idea that I drew. And like, yeah. as you see, the whole studio is covered, including on the ceiling. Sometimes I think about doing that. But I can't draw, so it would just be like yeah, lyric can. scribbles. I can probably. Uh, uh, I mean, there's all kind of great. Uh, I keep picking up tidbits y- from like every interview we do. We did one with Brian McCormick, and I was like, I think I can draw, and I think I'm a total artist right now, and I haven't even drawn a line. No, I, I see. <laughs> I, I think everybody has a, an artistic talent to them. Uh, yeah, it's a matter of how they do it, when they do it, why they do it. Uh, it's if, if you're doing it just to be an artist then i don't think it's a pure because you're not coming at it pure right if you're doing it because you love it yeah uh, because it's already in you then you have you have that in you everybody if if you have a passion for it you're gonna you'll get into it study it for sure i I mean i I love going on youtube and i watch i just type in like painting and watch somebody painting because then i learn something Mm -hmm. or or then i start like researching my favorite artist and, and look at their past work stuff that I haven't seen and I'm like, oh my God, that is dope. Like yes. Like I'd love to know how to do that. And, and and I start pulling inspiration from that and then I just come up with my own stuff. 
And I'm definitely interested in, so we've had a lot of artists bring up YouTube and looking up tutorials. And I do the same thing when I'm making music. If I am stuck or I'm trying to figure out how to like emulate or do something yeah. else, I'll look it up. Pre-internet, how did you get into like, this is how I draw? Was it just the neighbor or did you take classes growing up? I didn't take a class until college and I'll, I'll explain that to you because that ended hilarious. I didn't either bad. though, so yes. What I would do is I was big into sports. I, I love basketball. I love Michael Jordan. I, I I was into all that. Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, like like all the greats. Yeah. I had pictures of them all over my walls. And then I would like cars. But I wasn't like your normal kid that liked cars. Mm -hmm. Like I liked the high-end cars always growing up. I didn't want a fast car. I wanted something <laughs> that was like, even as a kid, like the term wasn't around. I wanted something that was baller, like like – the Mercedes, the Bentleys, the Rolls Royces, and now it's like the Maybox and everything yeah. else. So I would just look at something and draw it how I saw it. And then Hot Wheels came out with these cars that had like dragons, lines and stuff on it. I think I had a dragon one. Yeah, like the lizard and stuff like that. Yeah. I was like, this is cool. So I'd start seeing that. I'd draw that. Like just by looking at the car uh, instead of, I didn't have internet until I didn't 98, have it. 99. Yeah. Like, like not, not, and even at then, it's crawling, and there is no YouTube. So what do you yeah, do? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think back when the first time I explored the concept of porn, <laughs> like online, like that. That's kind of it. Might have been 97, 96. The internet is for porn, so that, that makes sense. You got a computer. It's boobs. Isn't it like I? I heard something. It's like thirty three percent of all traffic and and um, consumption is like porn. Makes sense. I'm Pornhub like, has the stat somewhere. Uh, uh, Pornhub? <laughs> no, PornMD. I'm, I'm telling you. What is this turning into? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to circulate this on Pornhub.com. Type in PGH Art Talk. <laughs> We're closed, though. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It, it could get weird. Yeah, it got weird. Going back to the normalcy. Yeah. yeah. Just getting into everything. <laughs> so, like, that, that's what I would do. I would look at objects and I would try to draw them. I would yeah. try to draw people. Um, and then throughout i always i was always drawn and i initially went to school for commercial art and i okay. had i had a instructor that she was pretty good up until we had a show coming and we had to do a, a three kind of like a three scene and one big drawing it had to be drawn in charcoals and stuff and then had to be had a had of a frame she gave us all this criteria yeah so what i did was i drew the grim reaper on one side on one part holding a gun okay and i'm talking like this was detailed detailed mm -hmm. and then on the second part of the frame like uh, of the picture it was hitler kneeled down blindfolded with the the grim reaper's gun and all you saw was a skeleton hand coming out holding a gun symbolic yeah obviously and, and then at the the last one was the gun was up like this I, I believe and there was smoke coming out and hitler was up against the wall like Arm still behind, and and the only color on there was like red, and it was from the blood, which is an amazing ass concept. It it like I mean I mean that's I was nineteen maybe I was nineteen when I drew that, so I mean that was a long time ago. Yeah, and and she was like, she talked to me in front of the class, which one don't reprimand me or talk to me in front. Of it the was class. a reprimand. Yeah, is you this get, college? Yeah, we're recommending in college for an amazing concept at nineteen. Well, well, she because it was supposed to go into an art show. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so so she's talking to me about this in front of the class, and she's like, "I can't show this. This is too violent." I was like, uh -uh. I, "I was like, that's violent, right?" But but burning how many like Jewish people isn't like, like yeah. That, that that's my mindset. And as she's talking, and I was like, "I'm not redoing it. I'm not." No. So I stood up in the middle of the class and I was like, you're a fucking Nazi. Like those words actually came out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I was like, yeah, I grabbed my stuff and I left. And what I wish I would have done was grab my whole portfolio because I had some amazing drawings in there. Uh -huh. Like I had this one, we had to do perspective and I had a hand coming out of the ground and it was bleeding from like here and, and it was all in black and white. except that another part, like it was like, Jesus's hand busting through concrete and going all the way down the hallway was this 
black cross with uh, like white highlights, and, and it kind of. And at that time, I think it, from what I remember, it looked three dimensional, and it was just like I thought that was like an amazing piece. And it's lost. It's gone. Uh. I, I, I I called the school shortly after. I was like, I need to get my portfolio and stuff. And they're like, well, you need to go see your, your teacher. And when I went there to go see her, I was like, I, I, need, I want my stuff. She's like, yeah, I got rid of it. I was like, all right. but it, and It's not all right, though. That's I, your I, work. I mean, like, what was I going to say? I, I, I don't I, know. I mean, Do you ever think about, like, recreating it? Or are you kind of like, the past is the past. It's, it's done. Like, let's just move on. Let's forward. I would love to recreate that. Um, a lot of things that are stopping me too is because even as an artist i try not to uh, putting out there my beliefs uh very blatant yeah um i uh i think some of my stuff you can tell is kind of religious in a way um uh, some of my old drawings that i did last year um but i try not to put anything that's political mm-hmm. out there because as crazy as it sounds there's people that believe with what i go against what you go against what and and when, when i say that it's like there's too much negativity and i don't have time to to go through and comment on something like that like recommenting i posted it a, 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 during the election in 2016 i posted a, a simple photo of me wearing a hat that says make racist afraid again I like and it. I said I did my civic I I did my civic duty or whatever. I voted and I voted against racism. Mm-hmm. Well, somebody came in at me and was like, "Blah blah blah, this and uh, what about Hillary?" And I was like, "Whoa! I never said I voted for Hillary." <sighs> I'm having war flashbacks to 2016. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like like that, probably even my browser this morning, waking up and scrolling through Facebook. It's like a very negative. It it, it is, and like I, there's there's people I don't talk to now because of that. And, Me too. And on, on my personal page, um, I I put my opinion out there, and I got into a lot of a lot of debates and arguments, which ruined tarnished a lot of friendships with friends and family and and you know what like believe what you want at this point i i, I don't want to lose any more contact with people it, to me it's not worth it if, if you believe that don't come out and say the the racist or the bigotry stuff to me yeah keep it subtle and keep or it maybe away from don't me. be racist or, i mean that it's easier said than done it is i mean because it's like hey, someone even told me you saying that you hate racist is being racist and I'm like, well, yeah. But- Get me out of here. This is like day to day southwestern Pennsylvania. Like, uh, we both grew up in the suburbs. We know what it's like. Yeah. So I try to make the like politics known in my art. Uh, I don't know if I'm doing a good job at this point, but but what do you like to put in? Like, if you don't want to go full politics, it's still very much like your your stuff is. I see the beliefs and everything that you do like from here social and it's crossed out and modern and it's like all this stuff. What do you like to put into it? What do you like like to express? I like to express uh, sometimes symbolic experiences or symbolic thoughts. Okay. Um, To me, I don't go out much. Uh, Yeah. I've, I lost my job. I had a really good job. I lost my job and and that, and I hit a lot of depression Mm. and it, and it, it's been, years going on which is has gotten better i didn't go out so like when it becomes a social function that's why like i hate going out socially at times because everything that's going on i can't control around me and i don't want to get in the conversations which in a way kind of led me to lose my job in a way okay. so so now it's like I, I stay home i'm comfortable at home i can do whatever i want if I don't want to wear pants on a Saturday, I'm not wearing pants and I don't have to worry about like putting something on to go out. It's yeah. true. But like in, in, but in mine, I like to show that experiences from my childhood, um, uh, and, and everything like that, uh, the happiness that I had to the hard times and sadness that I experience now. Yeah. And now it's kind of more like the happiness of, having a complete family into my art too. 
Yes. And I think that's kind of why it's kind of evolved into more of a childish stuff. And then that happened naturally. Uh, people say that it's very Basquiat influence mm-hmm. and it is uh it, it's i think a lot of artists can relate to him because of his depression that he had that he went through and i think every artist if if you're an artist you've been depressed you've been and, and that's my opinion. it always you, comes from somewhere like really deep like every something yeah. that you express day to day i'm never writing a song about like i went to work today and like did nothing it's always like something is bothering me right and i need to get it and like vomit it violently, and 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 that's and that's exactly what I do. Yeah. I, I, except I use a, a paintbrush or yeah. a spray can, and, right. and and you use a pen and paper. Yeah. I to me it's it's just an amazing way for an outlet for anyone is to do something artistically because you're finding more about yourself doing it. Yeah, always. And like I I recently I don't think I would know myself yeah, a lot uh, about myself if I wasn't I, being creative. I'm I'm gonna be 40, and now I'm learning so much about myself, and it's getting to a point where I don't care about what somebody thinks of me. I I, I just I was just listening to another podcast, and uh, Jeff Garland was on, mm. and he's like, I don't have the right to know what you think of me, and I'm like, yeah, that like I was like, yeah. So now it's like like now I'm, and that's kind of like. I was like, that's, I'm painting for myself now. I'm not painting for likes. I'm not painting for any, any type of thought. I mean, I've done so much pop art. I got so tired of doing it. Mm-hmm. Not, not that I don't love it. I just don't like doing it that much anymore. Uh, every now and then I throw something out there that's kind of poppy and, right. and fun. But that's usually because it's requested. And and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. To me, I I, I want to paint something that looks like a tiger that's half dog, or <laughs> or a dog that that has horns and, and wings. And I love all of it. Oh, no thank you. What you're doing. Uh, thank you. Yes, we are here with Bob Fryer, mm-hmm. and I am RJ Kozain, and you are watching PGHR Talk. It's part of BJHMuseums.org. I couldn't do this without him. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do without Brian, mm-hmm. who is behind the camera. And you, who is in the lens, or however I'm envisioning you right now, um, you make this happen. Our members make it happen. If you're interested in donating, it's 20 bucks to get you access to some museums and galleries and a class right now. I don't know if there's anything new, but look it, look it up. Tell me. Tweet at me and tell me if there's something new. Or I'll go to our website eventually and check. Uh, it's pghmuseums.org. We have exclusive content with artists that we do these talks with. And uh, it's great. I love doing this. I love you for watching this. You are, I just, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Uh, I want to do a quick rundown before we get back into the nitty gritty of the stuff that you've done because it's been a lot. <laughs> Raw artist, art all night a couple of times. Yeah. Delaney's Coffee, Red Fishbowl group shows, Southside Crawl a few times, Black Forge Coffee, which I love a few <laughs> times. Spirit, which I love, Mm -hmm. but you've also been Vegas, Colorado, California, Brooklyn. You've been Pittsburgh City Papers Best Visual Artist in 2016, and then the runner-up. Holy crap. Yeah, I I mean, I I like to say that I'm I'm not a great artist. I'm very prolific uh, with as many shows as I've been in. And uh, I think when I got the, uh, the award... For uh, in 2016, I was happy, mm-hmm. but it was always asking like people to vote for you. And oh yeah, and, last and, year I campaigned hard. I was like, please vote for me for Pittsburgh's premier popularity contest yeah. for best pop yeah. artist, mm-hmm. and do it in 2020. But yeah. do in 2020 for him too, <laughs> and for the museum thing and whatever. But yes, it, it is very much asking people to yeah, do it. And, so like, I, I think was it last year or the year before I was runner up or something, and I was like. I'm not going to sit here and spend my time it's not worth for it. a popular contest. No. It's, it's great to win. It and is, and, and yes. I thank everyone that voted for me. Anytime but, I see someone who I know win, I'm just like, oh, good. Okay, yeah, you're great. Yeah. Or someone that I'm, I find interesting. But yeah, you, I, you know I, I've seen so many people that, that I know that won for all kinds of things. And, and I'm really happy for them. Yeah, for sure. It, always. It, it's, it's, it's an accolade is an accolade. Exactly. And The Grammys are chamois, but anytime an artist I really like wins, great. But I think the city has so many artists, so many great, and and I'm speaking definitely for visual artists. Yeah, it, there's so much talent out here. That, there's a lot that it's just amazing. It's it, like I love 
seeing when I got friends that will post something sold like and, and I like seeing yes. it, I'm like good for you yeah like good for you like I, like I don't sell something every day but when I do I'm like I'm very grateful because somebody wants to hold my vision in their home you right know? and that's and that's, and that's special for sure oh it, oh it really is and it's like I see all these great artists and I just want them all to succeed like uh me too even if I don't all like the, the person yes but I like their art. There are a few people who I don't like. I won't tell you who you are. You no. probably know, but I <laughs> want you to succeed. <laughs> Wait, I, I mean, if, if you don't want someone to succeed, that's coming back to you. All right. And you're not going to succeed because that negative energy is going to turn around and kick you square in the dick. And you're going to be like, what the yeah. hell happened? Right? Yeah. And it's because you're putting out that negative. Energy. Right. There's ways to channel the negativity that's very constructive. Like we were talking about earlier with the art and there's ways to just like not do it. Yeah. And that's what I'm focusing on. Uh, like, for sure. I, I'm not even going to campaign for anything. I'm just going to focus on me. I have talks. I, I've been kind of working with a curator out in London. and He's going to London. I would, He's no, across I say the I'm, pond. <laughs> He's everywhere. I wouldn't say I'm going. Uh, they, they have my stuff on their, on their website nice. for, for emerging artists, which sells originals and prints. What are they called? Where can we check that out? Uh, Emergent Artist Platform. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. They contacted me. It was great. And now it's like, if I sell one piece over there, either a print or something, that's going to get me in the door. Yeah. Uh, but like, I've shown so much. I, I love it. Uh, the Colorado, the Vegas, California, uh, Miami. Anytime that I had my art there, I actually wasn't able to to go uh, okay. i mean it's uh i i've gotten feedback from it but uh eventually i'd like to do this full time yes for sure yeah and i mean pittsburgh has its its famous artists uh, for sure and it's uh it's doable but it starts somewhere and it starts in a dark place and, it does and it opens up the light Always. to something better yeah and we were talking earlier about uh, the social with the word cut out and how you don't like to go out a lot. And what's great about art is that you can just like be home all of the time. But when you put uh, in like solitude, mm -hmm. when you put something out, because you've been very prolific. And um, I've talked to a lot of live painters on the podcast so far who seem to very much enjoy what, that kind of like scene. When you put something out into the world, is it like how do you feel about that because it feels like it's social in a way and it's not for you and you can't control what people like think about well, it you spend so much time with it once you put it out online in a gallery or a showing space or you do a mural in the public it's no longer yours in no a way. not at all it's it, it's it's for the viewer it's for the community it's it, it's for whoever's looking at it mm -hmm. i might own the painting but now just because it's on my page it's viewable you just search for it and you can see it every day yeah um it's putting it out there's always iffy it, it, it's i remember the first time i posted something and i'm like oh my god why would anybody like this like like i, I yeah. i'm like should i delete it should i delete it every time yeah i do it yeah and and, and it's 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 just to me i i love the reaction i i, I enjoy Sometimes the negative uh, messages that I get, or, or the the people that tell me I'm, I'm their favorite artist, and I'm like, well, you're just lying to me. But I appreciate <laughs> it. Like, like I love here. Like, I like I love hearing it. But I, I imposter I syndrome is a thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's, it's just I don't know. The world's different, and it, it's it's just crazy. Like you put it out there, and people are just like, like, like it, it is what it is. Yeah, it's what they think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um. I don't like to ask the question about influences because I feel like it's just kind of like cheap, like kind of slid in there. But I'm genuinely interested because you have like these gas mask series where I have lists upon lists of stuff that you've done, like gas mask on Cat in the Hat, Andy Warhol, American Gothic by Grant Wood. Which is a great painting. Yeah. Like the original, the original. Uh, you have them on everything. Yeah. Well, so the gas mask to me was when I went back home, there was a park I always went to. I played. Mm -hmm. I played basketball. Went I have around. this quote. I think I know where you're going. It's written down too. Oh, no. Continue. So it's, I didn't see anybody in the park. Mm -hmm. And I, I have all these amazing memories going there, chasing girls, and, and just like doing all this crazy shit, but mainly basketball. 
mm-hmm. and the park was empty on a Saturday afternoon. And I'm like, kids are growing up too fast. Like, in in a sense, at that time, I'm still I was a kid in a way, and I'm still a kid now in a way. But to me, it's preserving the youth. It's ho- it's holding in the the childhood and and the experiences, and, and not kind of like letting the the negativity and the and the toxicity of everything coming in and and I guess pushing them away. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like everything you got to have technology in front of you it, like there's nine-year-olds are like let me see my calendar there uh, let me i hope that's not something a nine-year-old I, I, I mean i mean that's i mean I'll, i'm 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 that's I'm, I'm, terrifying I'm, I'm that i just got really joke. scared right now I, yeah i got you but like it's gonna be there it's like well yeah. let me check my day planner or i'll email you my availability it's like come on now like like there's yeah. nobody out playing there's there's no kids in the street like it's 2020 i've lived here for whatever years kids don't even go out tic tacking anymore and that, like i used to love that like 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 when we moved in we had trees out front i'm like i wish a motherfucker would throw some toilet paper at this you know like <laughs> like like i gotta yeah. protect my house but like there's none of that like now it's just like it's, i'm 30 and still want a toilet paper sure right uh, i've never fine. done it oh, i might amazing. do it oh, when's amazing. halloween this year Oh, tic tac and egg we're going. And- if someone eggs your house on Halloween this <laughs> it's year, us. it's going to be us. It's us. I'm calling you. Yeah, yeah. I also told someone in Lawrenceville that I would show up to the gas station. The Sunoco is Daria, so that's going to happen. And then we're going to toilet paper some houses. <laughs> I'm, I'm for it. All right. I'll dress as Homie the Clown. G- the Clown and Daria are coming to your trees. <laughs> But I do have the quote on here. It's on your website. It says, this place used to be magical. Kids used to fill the prairie grounds. Now it's filled with quietness and drugs. I miss the old days when people used to shoot hoops, not dope. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that... Um, so, what I was doing was... I used to do art jobs. Mm. And I always enjoyed going back to my hometown. Which, I mean, it's not far from here. But no. I would put paintings or pieces of art. Hide them post a picture of it be like or a live feed be like hey this is where i'm at guess what but without telling people mm-hmm. and it's it's kind of sad when you go and you see like syringes and stuff in, in a place where use was used for enjoyment and and everything in, in families or or even kids just like running around finger banging each other having a great time like you don't have to worry about Porn md now. yeah you don't have to worry about like like getting hit catching something because there's a syringe or, or, or even finding a pill that a child's going to pick up and think it's a piece of candy. Cause I mean, I mean, I've seen my kids just grab something off the floor and eat it, And I'm like, what mm-hmm. the hell? Like if they take like an oxy or, or whatever, some type of pill, like that'll, yeah, screw that's a up. no. That's yeah. A no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, oxys for kids are bad. Oxys for anybody are bad. Yes. So it, like, like that's where that quote came from. Cool. is is going back home and, and just realizing it's a whole like it's a whole different time set now yeah for sure so like messed up childhoods like from today like thinking about it dreaming seems to be something and then there's so much like moodiness and darkness especially i was scrolling through your instagram mm-hmm. there's old ink paintings that are just black and uh, like charcoal as well which is just like very like uh, messy and just like some of the darkest things i've ever seen in the city which is great like the darker the art the better yeah, so I, yes yeah i love it yeah and one that's like black on black on black on black and it's just like black background skull is black and i'm like where is that in this studio because i need to see it and uh, steal it <laughs> uh the the owner of a gallery actually bought that which uh, owner because i'm going to steal it. <laughs> it it is uh his name is christian and, christian and i'm coming own, for uh, you they own ketchup city ketchup city i'm coming for you <laughs> which yeah. you've done stuff with them as well yeah yeah uh, but it's it's always very your stuff is very very dark which I like and uh, a lot of things came to mind. Um, Zach Brown is another painter in the area who we did a podcast episode with a couple episodes back. Who also does very dark work. Mm-hmm. His place comes from like uh, religion and uh, the fear of death, whereas your stuff seems to come more of like why can't the kids just be kids? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like well, in, in in a way, yeah, and, and mine is it's also the fact that. It's not a fear of death. It's a realization. I'm mm-hmm. going to die. We're all going to die. And at this point, I think as, as, as a lot of people have said, writers never die. 
I think artists never die because if you have a painting and it means so much to you, your kids are going to have that painting or your significant other, and it's going to go down and down and down. And then ne- next thing you know, it's like 3,000 whatever. And someone's like, who is B Fryer or Dirty Art? You know, like right. I'm not even saying my stuff's going to last that long, but like to me, it, it goes that far. Like It's like eventually I, I think artists in, in some way, especially with the internet, are immortal. Yeah, for sure. Because like, it, at least until the servers go music. down what's that at least until the servers go down yeah that's never gonna happen i it? hope not no it's not, it's not gonna happen because <laughs> it's, it's gonna, great because yeah, art's gonna be so long lasting it yeah. feels like now oh it is it, it's everywhere I, and i love it, it yeah it, it, i get I, I find inspiration in in everything from everywhere for everywhere. sure and from death to like immediacy to end it out, I know that you've done murals, you've done all these exhibitions. You, I saw that you have a solo exhibition coming up at the Oakmont Carnegie Library. Tell yeah. us more about that. Where can we see you? Uh, well, the Oakmont, I haven't heard back from her, so I mean, I, I hit him up. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that still goes through. Um, Cross my fingers. <laughs> coming up uh, April second, I am doing a small exhibition at Hitchhiker Brewing in. Uh, I don't Mount, know where that's at, so I can't help Mount, you. Mount Lebanon, I believe okay, it's in. Okay, cool. That's it, right down the street? I'm like 10 minutes yeah, from there, so I'll be there. Yeah, uh, there, and then September, uh, I think it's September 4th for a week or something, I'm going to be showing at Ketchup City. And those paintings, will nobody will see those but me. I'm not going to share them on Instagram. I'm not going to post anything. Like You might see like a little corner of something that I do or a little bit of a detail, but... In the past, I've found if I share and share and share, you've already seen the show. Mm-hmm. Can't give it all away. Yeah. And it's so easy to want to give it all away. And and I thought that was such a great idea because I actually, I, I went to New Jersey with one of my best friends to go see a Jeremy Fish exhibition. Mm-hmm. And I've already seen all the paintings, all the ink drawings on Instagram. And then yeah. when I was there, I, uh, I got to see it all in person and I got to meet him. And, and my buddy, Matt, he was like, he kind of like leaned in and was like, dude, are you going to fucking cry? It but happens. I, well, we, I was like, yeah. Like, I, I, I was actually holding back tears of meeting this man because him and I have conversed through email, through uh, messages on Instagram. And it's like when he saw me, he knew who I was. Mm-hmm. And it, like he called me dirty, which I thought was funny. Uh, but now like when him and I... Uh, comment to each other and stuff like that he refers to me as bob which is cool it's like like regardless if he likes me at all he's so he's amazing with his fans and it's like it's just amazing like i adore this man and when i saw his artwork i i i I took i took our credit card with us and okay maybe smart maybe not no i I mean smart i I was good I, I, i was i was real good and i wanted to get something and but I saw the prices, and I knew if I came home spending seven thousand or five thousand dollars on a, on a piece, not that it's not worth it, my wife would probably be like, "Did you really need that?" And my answer every time would be like, "Yes." It's a yes. But like making a purchase like that without without consulting with her, I mean, we're not millionaires. Like we don't have money like that. So I was like, I held back. But the coolest thing I did get from him was, aside from a, a genuinely like amazing hug. Like he came, which is always good. Yeah. From someone who you like look up to uh, in uh, music. I met Imogen Heap last year. uh Who's, uh, I'm in music because of like one of the reasons I'm in it is because of everything that she's done. And it was just interesting. Like, cause I followed her so closely and been here and I've like, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. And she's like, Oh, you follow me this much. I'm like, yeah, is am I a stalker? Is it great? She's like, this is great. And it was it was just very nice to meet someone. And you always hear, don't meet your heroes, but every now and then a hero is great. Yeah, and and I've met almost all my heroes. Like uh, he was amazing. I took this sketchbook that he put out with uh, Upper Playground, and it was just like a. I feel like I'm like leaning back. Um, he he put it out, and it was like a like an eight by five little notebook, and you know, all blank pages. And I said, would you mind sketching something for my kids? Because like my daughter at the time, her and I would always go through his artwork and she loved it. So he, he sketched something. He was like, uh, to Annabelle, stay amazing or something. I, I have it in there. And then for my son, who was just born in May, and we went there in June, 
he wrote, he, he sketched a little bunny. Excuse me. And he wrote, welcome to the world, Joseph. Uh, like, so like, like, and that's kind of like a nod to you because you have those bunnies there too. That's yeah, great. Yeah. And it's it, actually, I was his silly pink bunnies Thanks. tattooed on my arm. I the love pink it. ones. Yeah. And uh, the purple ones actually represent uh, my daughter because she looks amazing in purple. <laughs> she does. I, I love it. It, it, it. I don't know. It's it, like, like you said, don't meet your heroes. I mean, I've met mine and. Maybe it's because it's the people that I follow, what they stand for. For sure. Uh, they're amazing. Uh, I could go on and on. I, I've become friends with one of my heroes, too, mm -hmm. through art. Uh, him, him and I, we, we talk pretty often. I went to his house. He took me to a concert. Like He came here for a soccer match with him and his, his wife and his two buddies. He sat down and played Star Wars with my daughter. Uh, he's talking to my son, who at that time was like a year and a half. He's like, what do you do to chip in here? He's like, what's your hustle? Like, how do you contribute? Like, it, it, yeah. it was great. So it's like, I think art just brings people together in some way. And it's the, it becomes the oddest friendships that you would never expect someone to be friends with. And it all happened because of art. For sure. Andy Warhol is dead, but I live right next door to him and his grave. So we're best friends. <laughs> and the community that we've like, we, we have in the city, not just me and Warhol, it yeah, is wonderful. I see, I, I loved Warhol. I, I, we, I, I took my daughter there and, and she, when we went in, she was like, we, we went, I think, what is it? The fourth or fifth floor that has, uh, the Basquiat and, and the, the it's Keith Aaron at the top. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere. It, she starts looking at him. She's like, daddy, are these yours? I was like, no, no, <laughs> no. I, I was like, I'm, I was like, I am not that good. You're good though. Nah. But like she, she enjoyed it. I, I just couldn't take her to the film room because there's that that video there's a lot of sexual there is and yeah i mean like and a lot of it you don't know like the blowjob is just a dude against the wall so i mean you don't know but you do you, know like and sometimes it's very blatant. i don't want her first experience of porn to one be with me or two to be at the andy warhol like i want her to stumble upon it if she does online the same way i did by a very direct at the time it was probably a yahoo or aol search <laughs> like like porn with bob <laughs> i mean like like I, uh, yeah it's weird that it circled back i know I, uh, i'm not i'm not i'm not that much of a pervert okay? i don't I, believe it at this point <laughs> i don't know what it, uh, it's gonna happen after this interview uh <laughs> wherever the computers are i don't know if i want to be in the room but thank you for being here oh, and doing you. all of this i love being in the studio i don't want to leave this studio you're welcome to, you, you guys come over anytime man. like i like, yes I, I can get beer pizza gluten-free pizza I'm chicken here. wings i'm like, stealing art i'm coming to the studio maybe i'll be on the dirty talk podcast who knows uh, that, behind that, this very thing check him out on youtube he does one of these thingies too i do uh yes. it's under uh dirty talk i do some time lapse videos of myself love painting. the time lapse videos uh i like to talk to creatives and yeah. and bring in a, a perspective of someone else to learn from them so like the people that i think people should know about i i want to get that out of there so definitely i i I will definitely schedule with you to get you on. Check it out. Yeah, it, it'll be coming <laughs> cool. up. Cool. That is awesome. Thank you. For, I do it for the same reason. So thank you so much. And we all do. We're all volunteer around here. PJ's Museums, PJHR Talk, it, Bob Fryer, Dirty. Oh, uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Thank you for listening to Art Talk from PJHMuseums.org. Your host today was RJ Kozane, and the program was edited by me, Brian Crawford. Today's music was Wallpaper by Kevin McLeod and can be found at filmmusic.io. It is licensed through the Creative Commons. Be sure to search PGH Art Talk on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever podcasts are found. We'll catch you in two weeks right here on Art Talk from pghmuseums.org. <laughs>